Hello, my name is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to explain how to use bacterial plasmids to deliver a gene of interest into a living bacterial cell and cause that bacterial cell to transform, to acquire abilities it didn't have before. Whatever abilities it is that that gene of interest that you picked will give to it. So in order to do this, we're going to need a basic list of supplies. We're going to need some, need some living bacteria, and in this case, we're going to pick E. coli bacteria that are negative for a gene called LAC-Z. This means that these E. coli bacteria do not have the ability to digest lactose. We're also going to need some agar plates to grow the bacteria on. Now, these plates are going to contain the basic nutrient media, which basically contains um, all the vitamins and minerals plus glucose that bacteria need to grow, plus we're going to add two special ingredients. We're going to add the antibiotic ampicillin, which normally kills bacteria, and we're going to add a, um, an extra sugar called X-galactose, which is a product that when the bacteria digest it, it produces a blue metabolite, and this is also known as X-gal. We're going to need our gene of interest from, um, the, from a human, for example, the insulin gene from humans. And we're going to need a restriction enzyme that can cut both the plasmid and the gene of interest. And we're going to need our plasmid. And then in this case, we're going to use a plasmid that contains an ampicillin resistance gene and a gene that gives the ability to digest lactose called LAC-Z. So the plasmid is carrying two genes. Let's use this diagram here to map or chart our progress through this procedure. So here, up here in the upper left, we have our bacterial plasmid. You remember, plasmids are loops of DNA that contain genetic material that's separate from the main loop of um, material in the bacterial cell. This plasmid, we have engineered it or selected so that, so that it has the ampicillin resistance gene, which is colored in orange right here. And we also have the LAC-Z gene which is colored in white right here. Now notice that the restriction site, remember restriction sites are the locations where uh, restriction enzymes can cut or break open DNA. The restriction site is located right in the middle of the LAC-Z gene. So when we add the restriction enzyme, it's going to break the plasmid open, but only at this location. So we are literally going to be cleaving the LAC-Z gene in half. And whenever you break a gene open and insert new genetic code in the middle of it, kind of like creating an artificial intron here, you now render the gene useless. The gene cannot work. And so that's going to basically shut down the LAC-Z gene if we insert anything in this space. Okay, so our first step is we're going to isolate or purify our bacterial plasmid and our gene of interest. Okay, the gene of interest over here is from a piece of human DNA and the gene of interest is colored in black, and it's got some other stuff that needs to be cut away by the restriction enzyme. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plasmid and our gene of interest, and we are gonna cut both of them with the same restriction enzyme. So what this is going to give us is plasmids that have been opened up because they've been cut at their restriction site, and the human DNA is going to be cleaved also into pieces and we're going to, we have selected the restriction enzyme so that it will cut here at a known location and only one known location. And it is, there's, there's restriction sites that are bracketing the gene of interest that we want. So we don't want to use a restriction enzyme that's going to break our gene of interest. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So you can pick uh, restriction enzymes for certain restriction sites that we know are not in our gene of interest. So we mix the restriction enzyme, the plasmid, and our gene of interest together, and what we end up with is a cut open plasmid and a gene of interest that's been cleaned up. And we're gonna mix them all together, and we're gonna add an enzyme called ligase. Remember, DNA ligase has the ability to kind of patch DNA back together. And if everything works, we're gonna end up with a plasmid that has the gene of interest inserted where we wanted to put it, okay? And ligase, of course, is gonna seal the, um, the restriction sites closed, so now we have a complete functional plasmid. Okay, and then we're gonna take our, our plasmid, which has the gene of interest inserted into it, and we're going to mix it into a culture containing our E. coli bacteria, all right? Now, remember, E. coli has its own DNA here in a loop called the nucleoid, 
And if everything works and if the E. coli takes up the plasmid, it will now acquire the ability to resist ampicillin. It'll be ampicillin resistance, resistant, but it will not have the ability to digest XGAL because its LAC Z gene is broken because that's where we have inserted the gene of interest. So then we're going to put our bacteria that we have hopefully transformed onto a clean agar plate and we're going to um, streak the plate which means you're going to take your your bacterial plate and you're going to rub it with um with the bacterial with the um, bacteria that you've attempted to transform so that you're spreading them out all over the plate and then you're going to incubate it and we're going to see which ones grow okay now on our plate if everything works because remember it contains ampicillin we should get two different colors of colonies growing we're going to get blue colonies and we're going to get white colonies. Okay. Now, the blue colonies are not the ones we're interested in. Because remember, the blue colonies have taken up a plasmid that is just reattached. So imagine it's this plasmid without the gene of interest in it. So these two little white parts, which are the Latin Z gene, has reattached to itself or re-annealed. So if that happens, we basically restore the plasmid to what it was before. And if a bacterial cell takes up that this plasmid without the gene of interest in it, it's going to have the ability to resist ampicillin and grow, but it's also going to have the ability to digest XGAL and produce the blue metabolite. So those colonies are going to be blue. The white colonies, on the other hand, are the ones we're interested in. The white colonies will have taken up this plasmid, all right, with a broken LAC Z gene, but they still have ampicillin resistance. So they can grow, but they don't turn blue, they turn white. Okay, and then we're going to grow these bacteria by the trillions to produce lots and lots and lots of copies of this of this gene of interest that we have put in it. All right, so let's look at this slide and try to pull all this information together. The bacterial cells that did not take up any plasmid at all are not going to grow because they're going to be killed by the ampicillin. So you're not going to see any of these cells. They're, going to, they're not going to appear as visible colonies because they're dead. The ampicillin kills them. The bacterial colonies that grow blue, okay, the little blue specks you see on here, these are millions and millions of bacteria that are cloning themselves from an original bacterial cell that took up a plasmid, but the plasmid didn't take up it wasn't a transformed plasmid. So the plasmid does not contain the gene of interest. It has a um, completely functional Latin Z gene. So these guys are going to metabolize galactose and turn blue. We don't want those. Those aren't the colonies we're interested in. The colonies that took up the transformed plasmid are going to grow white. And those are the ones we want. So the colonies on here that are white are the ones that have done a couple different things. They've taken up the plasmid. Okay. They have the plasmid. And they also have the plasmid with the gene of interest inserted. Okay, and when the gene of interest gets inserted into a plasmid, we say that it is a transformed plasmid. All right, and that's what we want. So then we're going to get our white colonies. So what you then do is you take a bacterial loop which you sterilize in a Bunsen burner. It's, a, it's a, basically a, a metal handle with a little loop of metal on the end of it. Sterilize it, scoop out one of those white colonies, and rub it onto a fresh auger plate. All right, And then you incubate that. And what you should now get is lots and lots of little colonies of just the white bacteria. And you can repeat this process to your heart's content and grow as many trillions of these as you want. The best example I can think of in industry uh, where this is something like this has happened is how genetic engineers created a drug called Humalog. And Humalog is a human version of insulin that has been grown by bacteria. So what you basically do is you transform a, a plasmid with the insulin gene and you insert that transformed plasmid into a bacterial cell and then you grow these bacterial cells in fermentation tanks by the quadrillions and then you refine out of that bacterial soup the insulin that the um, bacteria are going to be translating from the messenger RNA that they transcribe from the DNA that you inserted, which originally came from a human. So you literally have created a Franken bacteria 
that does something that no bacteria can do. It can make insulin, which is, of course, an important hormone that human that some people need to take to treat their diabetes. And this, um, this diabetic drug now is produced cheaply and cleanly and purely in the form that humans can tolerate the best, which is human insulin, just like your own body would naturally make if you did not have insulin. So this is a great example of how a genetically modified organism, in this case a bacterium, has helped and probably saved millions of lives over the last 30 or so years, as long as this technique has been known. Thanks for listening, and we will stop there.